But you got to work, right? Daddy's got to eat. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, well, I actually did it just before the birth of my daughter, so there wasn't a reason for me, because I thought, well, I'm not going to work for a while, and I'm just finished just before uh, my wife goes into labour. And, um, you know, so there's, there's experiences one follows. You worked with one of the... Uh, who's considered, who was considered at the time the greatest living actor, Marlon Brando. Yeah. You worked with Brando and Val Kilmer in The Island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah. What was that like? It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was well. I, I've famously t- spoken about this many times. It was. It was about the weirdest five months of my life. Quite honestly, it was. Um, and I recommend anyone, even though it's not a good film, <laughs> but watch it because it was one of the strangest films you'll ever see. You're also an author. I am an author and a poet. And a poet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just wake up and go. Today I feel like writing prose. Uh, well, I've, I've, always, I've always written, even before I wanted to be an actor, I always, uh, I always uh, wanted to be a writer before all that, so uh, my, my life has led me in such a way that I, that was made possible You're a big recently. fan of Charlie Kaufman, aren't you? I'm a huge fan of Charlie Kaufman that I know you've had on the show, and um, I, I think the guy's a genius, and I was fortunate enough to work with him about three years ago on a stage in Los Angeles with Jennifer Jason Lee and Meryl Streep and Peter Dinklage, Hope Davis, um, Tom Noonan, and it was... Just incredible. And he rang me at home. I'd never met the guy. I never uh, knew he knew who I was. And I just picked up my cell phone one day and he was like, Hi, it's Charlie Kaufman. I've written a part for you. So that's a nice call to get. Sure. Yeah. What was it like that? For, if, you, if, you, if you look at somebody and think you're a great writer, what's it like the first day on set when, or on a stage when you know that you're going to work with somebody who has inspired you? Well, well, well it, it, would, it would have been um, momentous had I known what Charlie Kaufman looked like. Um, <laughs> but, but I, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd spoken to him several times a bit, three or four times on the film, on the, on the phone, uh, where he talked at length about this project he had written for me. And the day I turned up, we rehearsed it in New York, and I was just buttering a, a bagel, and there was lots of people around on the first day of rehearsal, and just this one guy came up, and said, like, hi, it's Dennis, hi, it's Ian, hi, it's Pete, it's Susan, like that. And this one guy came up and go, hi, it's Charlie, and I was like, hello, hi, dear Charlie. I just carried on buttering my bagel, and I thought, I just met my hero and a genius. And the guy who had said, you're my hero, you're the biggest genius I've, I've ever talked to on the phone. <laughs> but I'm apparently more interested in buttering my bagel. <laughs> and I was horrified. Then we, we started the rehearsal, and Charlie stood up on the podium and started to conduct the rehearsal, and I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's Charlie right there. That, that's him. Yeah. You, do, um, you have to have a sense of humor about life in general, but certainly yeah. about your business, don't you? Uh, you yeah, 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 you, yeah, totally. Otherwise, you go, you go nuts. The Potter films have been huge for you all. The which films? The Potter films, you heard of them? <laughs> there was this, uh, uh, there's a series of books, uh, not unlike the Hardy Boys. Um, oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you walk by kids, do they still freak out? Well, well, no, they don't. This is a misconception that I, I can't walk around the streets, or anyone in Harry Potter can't walk around the streets. Um, I, it's because so you all fly on carpets. <laughs> I believe that's why, right? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I took my three-year-old daughter to uh, Disneyland recently, and, um, and we got given VIP treatment and taken around by this woman who's like, we must you know, keep all the kids back. And I spent, like, eight hours at Disneyland, and not one person uh, came up or hassled us at all. So this woman felt totally redundant and not very impressed, quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I told you you were a big deal. It's like, man. No, not so much. Not such a big deal. Have they lifted your ban from China yet? You were banned in China. Weren't you banned in China? I am banned from China, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I heard I'm banned from China. Well, I, did, I did this film years ago with uh, Brad Pitt called Seven Years in Tibet. And, um, and, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that for Brad Pitt or Tibet? Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, so uh, Brad and I and uh, the director, Jean Jacquinot, received legal faxes saying we're, we're banned from China. Now, I've never, I've never tested it out, but I, I use it as kind of bravado with my mates, you know. It's like, I can't go, I'm banned from that pub. I'm like, I'm banned from China, man. <laughs> <laughs> the film is called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is playing in Toronto now and other cities on November 21st. David Thewlis, thanks for coming in, man. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers.